So primary school children will be exposed to subjects like coding and data analytics. Just how important might this be? Well, to give us a view is someone who understands computer science pretty well. I'm now joined by data analyst uh, Bong Yue Nyambi. Thanks so much for joining us. Welcome to the program. Thank you for having me. So did you get excited when you heard that sentence from the, pr from the president? Of course I did. So for me, this means that now South Africa finally catches up with the world. And it's not even the world. It's the rest of Africa. You know, we are so behind in technology that you know we actually missed the we are just got onto the third industrial revolution right now and you know stats show that um in five years 35 percent of the jobs that we have now will be absolute so it doesn't help running away from the facts it it needs us as citizens of africa of south africa to actually actively say yes we are going to be part of this because it is not just lip service it is something that is going to happen we the world is industrializing robotics are coming in to take the labor intensive jobs and now we need then to have the skills because we are moving away from labor intensive we are going into a knowledge economy so everybody has to have at least the basic skills of knowing how to use the internet how can the internet help them how will they be able to move from you know packing stuff with their hands and how will they use the knowledge that they are going to get from this new era of the fourth industrial revolution because it is not coming yeah. it is here so here's the challenge as well the, the president spoke about the, the challenge of children reading for meaning uh, our literacy levels are, are, are quite challenged at the moment can we be doing this kind of thing when we're still struggling with just basic literacy so my thing with, with that is people learn differently. So, you know, you may find that somebody who cannot understand history because of all the dates that are attached to it and all that can actually understand coding because coding is everyday language. Coding is saying that, okay, I want this to move from here to there. So what do I do? Just tell the computer, move this from here to there. So with coding, it's using human logic mm. to apply it to a computer. So for me, that is really not a problem. It is learning with, you know, using your everyday, how you, you actually talk every day and think every day and use it. Tell the computer to do that. All right. So yes. now for your MSc, you did an interesting project and you were looking at... Um, developing interfaces for rural areas in particular. So tell us a little bit about that and, and what it means, because I guess in many ways our children are going to be learning in a different way even. Uh, they're not going to have textbooks. Yeah. Uh, they're going to be interfacing with their education in a different way. Chat to me a little bit about this notion of interfacing and using technology. Um, so for that, what was interesting was that it was not only an interface mm. For, you know, it was rural area users who are illiterate. So my older student was actually 84. So this is somebody who has, who has never seen a computer, who has never touched a computer. So you had firstly to deal with, you know, how do you introduce this big machine that is very scary to somebody who doesn't even speak English? How do you translate all the jargon? You know, how do you make them remember what a mouse is and, you know, and all that. So for me, what's important is that when I was building the interface, I was focused on visual visualization. So it is very important. I feel everybody can learn through visualization. So if you have an interface that is easy for you that says this is the internet. So I think with this new introduction of these new courses, we have to again not adopt the European style of doing things, but we actually have to remember in a South African context what will work. Make, make it as easy and as usable as possible for the end user, mm. then we are good to go. I was reading again a little bit later on that this year Rwanda have set up its first public coding school, literally just focused on that. Yes. And it, it just makes me wonder, a small country like that, and we are supposedly you know, one of the most inv advanced uh, countries uh, uh, on the continent, What's been holding us back, do you think, that we really need to accelerate? I think it's resistance. So it's 
not knowing what this means for us, how is it going to benefit me when you talk about the fourth industrial revolution? So I think it's a matter of breaking it down further to make people understand that this means you have access to the internet because that is the biggest stumbling block in our country. Data is very expensive as compared to African countries, you know. So that is telling them that you will have access to resources that you have never had access to. So the minute you get exposed to the outside world, what is out there, what you can do with what you know, you know, you can, you will actually be surprised how you do not need to go to varsity to be able to start a business. You don't actually have to teach business yeah. school. You don't have to teach business courses. You can just give the people access to internet, access to information, and then you, can, you mm. will see how South Africa will actually grow because I think that's where we're lacking right now. It's the access part. People don't know what this means. All right, so um, I don't know if you can try and contextualize for us. Yes. It was one small sentence in his speech, mm -hmm. but I get a sense that actually the impact of that initiative will be huge in terms of our country and our future. Can you try and paint a picture for us what it's going to mean for South Africa if kids in primary school are learning coding and data analytic as early as primary school? Oh, that is opening up a new world. Mm. That is opening up because at school you are supposed to learn collaboration, communication, negotiation, teamwork and all that. When it comes to coding, now you actually learn those skills in addition to now knowing how do you use information that is available to you to make decisions. So data analytics and coding is basically opening the mind you know we always talk about innovations but we are not so innovative in south africa so that is where it comes mm. in you know when you teach kids using robotics then you open them you're opening them up to a new world where it is no longer just an a human factor you can use data to make decision it doesn't have to be what your neighbor told you or what your experiences are so with a new experience comes then you know new ways of thinking and innovation so for me it's it's where we should be going. It is where we should be excited to go because we are opening up a new way of thinking, which is endless possibilities. Yeah. So I'm going to ask you this next question, and it's partly really to get to where I want to get to eventually. Yeah. But how did you get into data analytics and computer science? So, um, so I never really wanted to do science mm. in varsity. And I just bumped in. So I tried a lot of courses. I did maths, physics, and everything. And then only to find that computer science was literally the only course that I actually enjoyed doing. And that really is where I wanted to go because it seems to me that we are bumping into things yes. by accident. Yeah. And there really should be a more deliberate process, such as teaching as young as primary school, so mm -hmm. that we know that there's a path to certain professions. Yes. Yeah. yeah, so that is very true mm. because, you know, I think it's really not being open to knowing what's next. So, you know, we started from the first industrial mm. revolution, the second electricity car, you know, came and then nobody actually bothered to check what will be next. Then the internet was introduced. Now is the fourth industrial revolution where everything yeah. is happening, you know, the internet of things. Now we, will, uh, we are coming to wearable technology, you know, when people are yeah. now, health is a thing now with mm. wearable technology and all that. So for me, it is when you open up information to people when the information is there then it will be easy it will be these kids who will be telling us what's the next revolution what the next careers will look like because right now nobody can tell you because nobody is focused on that we are focused on when will uh, when will my next meal come you know where will it come from and all yeah. that but with information then you are opening up somebody will be curious enough to check and and let us know what the next revolution will be what what are the next careers in the next 20 years Bongiwe Nyambi, thank you so, so much for joining us. And uh, I hope that we've inspired at least one child just listening to you <coughs> uh, today uh, and uh, opening a whole new world. Thanks so much indeed for your time. Thank you, Peter. And I hope everybody will get excited because this really is what you need. You need information. Mm. You do not need handouts. Oh, thanks so much indeed.